Do you view the lacing of motorcycle rims as intimidating or some form of black magic best left to an expert? If that's the case, then stay with me because today I'm going to take you through the process that I use to lace rims and I believe this greatly simplifies the process and breaks it down to the point that virtually anyone can begin this discussion by reviewing the two different styles of spokes we'll be using. On the right, the outer spoke, and as the name implies, is used on the outside of the wheel hub, has a longer bend, and is at least a full 90 degree bend, if not even slightly more than 90 degrees. On the left is the inner spoke, again, as the name implies, is used on the inside of the wheel hub. You note this bend is a little shorter, and is not a true 90 degrees, in fact, it's slightly less than 90 degrees. These differences are important as we begin lacing the wheel. I'm going to demonstrate the actual lacing using this 17 inch in diameter front wheel for the little Yamaha YL1. This is a new old stock wheel which I bought considerably cheaper than I could rechrome the original. It's no longer available from Yamaha. You'll notice the labeling here on the rim. This happens to be a DID brand rim. That's a Japanese, large Japanese manufacturer of wheel rims. Very, very famous and very well known. And this is the size of the rim, etc. stamped along the rim here. Occasionally you'll find this nomenclature stamped in the shoulder of the rim here. That's not uncommon. The reason I'm showing you that is I prefer to lace wheels with any stamping, labeling, or nomenclature to the left side of the bike. In my experience, it's generally how they came from the Japanese factories, though there certainly might be exceptions to that. But I like to place any labeling, whether it's on the outside of the rim here or on the shoulder, to the left of the bike. Consequently, I've identified the left side of the wheel hub. On this bike, the brake backing plate goes on from the right. So if it makes it easier for you so that you don't get them turned around, identify the hub side ahead of time that would line up with the uh, left side of your wheel and just label it like I did here. I just did that for my own benefit so as I move parts around I don't get confused and find out later on I've laced the hub backwards in relationship to the labeling of the wheel. You don't have to do it that way. You can, you can turn it around and put the labeling on the right if you want. It doesn't make any difference. That's just my preference. Since this is the left side of the wheel and the hub, what I'm actually going to do now is turn it over like that because I prefer to work with this open side. Don't ask me why. It's just my preference. I prefer to work with this side up to begin with. I've already pre-separated my inner and outer spokes. So I have here the inner spokes, all 18 of them. Now this is a 36 spoke wheel. There's also other uh, spoke patterns, 32 and 40. I've never laced a 32 inch wheel. Most of the bikes I've worked on, in fact, I, I don't know if I've ever laced anything but a 36 spoke wheel, which this is. Just note that both the 32 and the 40 spoke patterns, there are some nuanced differences, not significant, but some differences from what I'm going to show you today. And this is for a 36 spoke wheel. Consequently, there are 18 inner spokes and 18 outer spokes. I've already separated off the outer spokes and the 18 nipples that go with them, so I can't get them confused. These are just the inner spokes. You always start with the inner spokes. Don't ever start lacing with the outer spokes or you will end up taking your wheel all apart and starting over as you will not be able to finish it if you start with the outer spokes. 18 inner spokes, 18 spoke nipples, and now we can go ahead and get started. So I know my wheel is oriented correctly in this view. I have the right side of the rim and the right side of the hub facing up, just my preference. First thing you really need to do is identify the valve stem hole on the rim. Let's see if we can find it. Right there is the round valve stem hole. And that's important because that becomes 
our primary reference point that we're going to begin lacing from. So in order to identify that and make it easy to see, and you can do this many different ways. You can use a piece of tape, you can use a dry erase marker, a sharpie, whatever works for you. I'm simply going to use a red sharpie for now, and I'm simply going to mark it with red at the point of the valve stem. You don't have to do it that way. You don't have to mark it at all if you don't want to, but I prefer to do it that way so that I can keep track of the um, valve stem hole, which becomes our primary reference point. So now I'm going to locate the valve stem hole, marked in red where my thumb is, to the top as I'm standing at the, the workbench or the work table. You can see it right here. In fact, I can make that a little clearer for you for the video that you can see where the valve stem hole is. Our next step is to identify the pattern of the spoke holes. And these are, there's a four, a repeating four hole pattern. Starting with the first hole to the right of the valve stem hole, first hole to the right, I'm simply going to write a number one. I don't know if you can see that. Then number two, number three, and number four. You can see that there. Starting to the right, one, two, three, four. You'll also note that these holes are oriented in different directions. They'll point, if I can get my finger in here, they'll point like that, they'll point like that, and then in the opposite direction they'll do something like this and something like this. And then the pattern will repeat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, etc., all the way around the rim. Now, I'm not going to write one, two, three, four all the way around the rim, but what I am going to do is I'm going to identify the next number one hole, which is right here. You see what I mean? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and this is important because we're going to use this for our lacing pattern to start with here in a minute. One, two, three, four, one, and all the way around the rim. So I'll just continue the process. So now that we're almost back to the valve stem hole, you can see this is number one, the last number one that I've marked, two, three, four, and then the pattern repeats. So now I've got the number one holes all the way around marked. So that's here, here. I'm just doing this to make it a little easier for you to see from the top. You don't have to mark these if you don't want to. If you want to just count them, that's perfectly fine. Now we're going to identify on the rim where we're going to begin the lacing pattern. And it really doesn't make any difference where you start. It really doesn't. However, if there is a pattern that's been uh, or a mark on the rim from the previous spokes, and occasionally you'll see a little uh, angle from a previous spoke that's been pressed into the aluminum, and you want to use that same pattern, then don't pick one of those holes that's got a mark for your your first spoke. This rim doesn't really have many marks. I think there is one right there you can just barely see, but some are quite pronounced. So just don't start with one of those holes. Other than that, it doesn't make any difference where you're going to start your lacing on the wheels. Now we're going to begin the process of installing our first set of inner spokes into our wheel hub. I'm going to start with this hole my finger is pointing right here for no particular reason. It's just the one I'm going to start with. I'm going to mark that and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to orient that when I start lacing to the edge of the workbench like you can see here so I can drop the spokes through and make it easier to start the process. Again to reiterate the inner spokes come up on the inside of the wheel hub something like that and the outer spokes will go on the outside of the wheel hub, which means we have to drop these through from the outside so they'll come through like that. 
Now the reason I mark that first hole right here is I'm going to use that to determine and mark the beginning of the lacing pattern for the opposite side of the wheel when I end up rotating the assembly over. It's a lot easier to do that now than later on. So what I'm going to do is simply rotate the wheel over. You can see that's that number one hole and position the hub like this. Now you'll note if you draw a line straight up vertically from that first hole here that would come up something like that. They're not directly in line. In order to determine the first hole for the second lacing pattern of the inner spokes, I'm going to start with the first hole to the immediate left, right here, and count over five. One, two, three, four, five. That will be the first hole of our second set of inner spokes. Again, draw a line up from your first spoke you're going to start with, marked here, my finger is. Move to the first hole to the left and count over five. One, two, three, four, and five. And mark it. Now if this is a 40 or a 32 spoke pattern, that hole count would be different. On a 40 it would be seven for instance. I'm not sure what it would be on a 32 because I've never laced a 32. It would probably be three, but I'm not sure. But for our purposes of this 36 spoke pattern, five. Find, or find your original hole, one, two, three, four, five, and mark it. And we'll use that in a few minutes. Now I'm going to rotate the hub back over. I'm going to place that first hole on this side, just off the workbench like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to take my first nine inner spokes, and I'm going to begin inserting them through this, through this hub, starting at the first hole, skipping every other hole. First uh, spoke, skip one, second spoke, skip one, third spoke, skip one, all the way around. And as I do that, as I begin the insertion of the spokes, I'm going to rotate this hub clockwise, and you'll see why in a moment. Also, if you're going to add any kind of a lubricant like anti-seize or oil, I prefer to do that at a later step. You can add it now, but it tends to get smeared all over the place in the workspace. So I'm going to do that during the next step. So beginning with my first inner spoke, I'm just going to drop it through my marked hole, rotate it to the right, skip a hole, drop in a spoke, rotate it to the right, skip a hole, and just work my way around. And now we're back to the number one spoke right there that we started with every other hole all the way around. <clears throat> now I'm going to take a piece of blue tape and I'm going to mark that number one spoke. That will give me a visual indicator later on in case I have to backtrack for some reason and it will be helpful in this next step. I've moved the hub end of wheel back into the center of the workspace. Again I have my valve stem hole at the top marked in red. This is my number one spoke that I started with, and you can see the pattern of the spokes. That's why I rotated the hub to the right or clockwise as I installed the spokes into the hub. This next step is really going to begin our lacing pattern. So I'm going to take the number one spoke marked with the blue tape, and it's going to be inserted into the first hole to the immediate right, spoke hole on the immediate right, of the valve stem hole. That's marked in red. So this number one spoke will go into this first number one hole. The second spoke will go into the second number one hole. The third spoke into the third number one hole, etc. Working my way around. Now would be a time to apply anises or a lubricant to the spoke threads if you wish. I'm going to use just a little anises put a little bit on the end of the spoke threads. I'm going to move the rim in against the spoke here, 
Again, this is that first number one hole, and I'm going to start a spoke nipple, a few threads. Take my second, I'm going to take my second spoke, little anti-seize. Start a nipple with a few threads. The third spoke goes into the third number one hole. A few threads. And now I'm simply going to work my way around the wheel, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc., into the respective number one holes. Now we've got the first set of nine spokes, the inner spokes installed. Number one spoke to the number one hole and laced around accordingly. You can see the alignment. That was the purpose of marking these number one holes. You don't have to do it. It makes it visually a little easier uh, when you're uh, inserting the spokes into the holes. So now we need to rotate the whole assembly over so that we can do the inner spokes on the second side of the wheel. The way I do that is I put my hand in the middle of the hub and just support it, grab the rim with my opposite hand, tighten up the spokes, pick up the assembly, and just rotate it and drop it into place like that. And now you'll notice the lacing pattern is reversed, which is what we would expect. I'm going to rotate this assembly so that once again I have my uh, valve stem hole at the top, 12 o'clock position. This is the number one spoke. Of course, now it's reversed. And here's our starter hole for the next uh, lacing pattern. Now, at this point, you can slide this whole hub over like we did before and drop the spokes through from the face side. What I prefer to do at this stage is I will support the hub and lift it up off of the table. You can use blocks of wood, you can use anything that's convenient. I have this plastic kitchen container. When my wife uh, rotates these out every so often, she gives them to me and I have um, a couple of plastic bags full of these. And this is about the right size, it's about the right diameter and about the right height and it'll work perfect for this. So essentially what I'm going to do now is just lift up the wheel and support it like that. And the rim itself is just supported by the spokes. At this, uh, this time, if you're going to use uh, anti-seize on your, on your second set of spokes, uh, I would apply it now and get all the spokes as you're inserting them into the wheel hub, add a little anti-seize, and it'll be a little easier now from now on doing it this way. Now we can begin the process of installing the second set of inner spokes on the opposite side of the wheel. Again, we've already marked our starter hole here. I'm going to put this valve stem hole to the top at the 12 o'clock position. And using the first spoke, put a little anises on it. I'll drop it through. I'm going to rotate this first spoke on the second side around like that to point to the first hole to the immediate right of the valve stem hole. Again, this is our first spoke from the opposite side. Valve stem hole, first hole to the immediate right of the valve stem hole will be our first spoke on the second side. And now I'll simply Spin a nipple on like that. So now I can simply continue the process by skipping a hole here with my fingers pointing. That's two holes over from the original on this side. Skip a hole. Now that spoke will point to the immediate right of the next spoke in line here. Or you can count over if you want. 
This is the first one. One, two, three, four. That would be this spoke. One, two, three, four. That would be the next spoke, etc. Or simply note the relationship of each pair of spokes. So using a little anti-seize, skip a hole, drop the spoke through like that, rotate it around. See that spoke there? This is one, two, three, four, and I'll put a nipple in. Little anti-seize, skip a hole, drop the spoke through, rotate it around. Again, note the relationship, the next spoke in line, right here. Start it. Again, the fourth spoke over from the previous one. That's another way to account for it. One, two, three, four. I watch just the pattern when I can see these spokes coming together. The other thing you might note is that the angle of the hole in the rim will align. If you find yourself with these uh, holes in the rim not aligning with your spokes, then something's wrong. But that also gives you a visual indicator. Little NACs. I can rotate this around if I want. I don't have to. Drop in the next spoke. Rotate it around. Like that. So now you're starting to see the pattern develop. This next spoke will go here. This spoke will go here, etc., all the way around. When you get to the last of the inner spokes on the second side, you might find you can't get it through this nest of spokes here to get over to its hole where it belongs over here where my index finger is. It's easy to address. Just remove the nipple from the first spoke you installed initially. And what we're going to do is just rearrange these spokes slightly. I'm going to push the original inner spoke down and cross the new spoke over the top like that. That should come over the top. Then I'll reinstall the nipple on the original number one starter spoke. And now I can go ahead and install this last spoke nipple. Now we can proceed with the outer spokes and it becomes quite a bit easier now because the pattern has been established for us. It doesn't make any difference where you start again because we're going to be doing every other hole anyway. And the orientation of the holes in the rim will give you a visual indicator of what spoke goes to what hole. So starting with one of the outer spokes and keep in mind these have to come up from the inside like that because they lay against the outside of the rim that's why it's called an outer spoke what you'll want to do and in in how it's oriented right here is rotate this across this companion spoke at an acute angle you can see it's very acute angle here and you'll also notice over here that that uh, rim hole aligns perfectly with that spoke. So we'll work our way around every other hole like that, like that, and it's quite visual at this point.
I'm just going to apply a little bit of anti-seize and then the first spoke nipple like that. And I'm just going to simply rotate the wheel. That's one of the benefits of having it elevated. It rotates quite easily. Now I'm going to just rotate the wheel and keep moving around. Notice the acute angle. You can see the angle of this hole points right towards that spoke. Now if you want, you could go through and pre-install all the spokes like this and then at anti-seize all at one time and then just simply attack, attach the spokes. That's really up to you, whatever pattern you want to use. Now we've got this side of the wheel completely done. All we've got to do now is flip it over back to the original side and we'll finish up with the last nine of the outer spokes. All that's left now is to complete the last set of outer spokes. It doesn't make any difference, again, orientation of wheel at this point because we have just nine holes left in the hub and nine holes in the rim. And now the orientation of the spokes will become quite visual for you. Inserting a spoke through from the bottom, like we had to do before, because again, this is an outer spoke. We'll maintain that same acute angle. And you'll notice that this spoke points towards the correct orientation hole in the rim. If you try to go the other way, number one, it won't look right because you can see the pattern here is starting to get broke up. And this hole where my finger is right here is not oriented, it's pointing the opposite way. So you'd have to really go to great extents to get this wrong at this point. So you just want to maintain that same pattern. I'm going to go ahead and insert all the spokes, come back and add anti-seize and then finish the lacing. and we have a finished laced wheel. We'll now have to go through, of course, and tighten up the nipples equally all the way around the hub. I usually work on opposite sides like this and pull in the nipples equally and gradually tighten it up and then that will lead us to the next step which would be trimming of the hub and that will be the topic of another video in the future. I'd like to reiterate for you that lacing of the hubs is not difficult. If you pay attention to how you orient your spoke pattern, marking it like I did and I illustrated in the video and take your time, sincerely, uh, once you get your process down, you can lace a wheel like this in under 30 minutes. It, uh, seriously, I know it might not seem like that, but it's, it's entirely possible takes me much longer here because I had to stop and uh, worry about the recording and trying to get you the right views. But 30 minutes or less, 
to get the wheel laced is entirely doable. There's no great mystery to it. I trust this video was helpful for you. If you've got any questions or concerns, feel free to drop me a note. And as usual, thanks for watching.